Okay, here we go. Now this example says find the directional angle of each vector, but I haven't even told you guys what a di direction angle is. Okay, um, so let's take a look at this. First, u right here is in um, the unit combination, the unit vector combination form. Uh, let's change it to component form because I feel like you guys like that better. So what is, the, what is this in component form? It would be 3, 3. Okay, there it is. Okay, that's, that's the same vector. That's, that's what u equals. Now, if I were to graph 3, 3, what would that look like? Now, you could start from, like, right here and go that way, as long as this has a dis the same distance as this one, but that's annoying. Let's just start from the origin and keep it simple. So we go 3, right 3, up 3, and now we have our vector. Oh, man, that's a horrible line. Oh, that, that's just as horrible. Okay, but anyways, that's our vector. Now, where is the angle? Well, this is when we get back into our trig. Okay, the angle is right here. You're looking for this. That is the directional angle right there. How do we find that angle? Um, you guys know that if we had a triangle right here, and we knew that this was 3 and this was 3, uh, you guys can find uh, the angle by using which function? Which trig function? If you have the opposite and the adjacent, which trig function would you use? Tangent. Yes, tangent. So it would be tangent theta equals what? Three over three. Equals 3 over 3. Oh, that's fantastic. Why? What is 3 divided by 3? 3 divided by 3 equals 1. Ooh. You know why that's fantastic? Because you guys know what tangent theta equals. You know what theta is. What is theta? If tangent theta equals 1, what is theta? 45. It is 45 degrees, or you can say? Pi over 4. Now, if you didn't remember that, you could have used inverse tangent, tangent inverse, or arc tangent. Um, but this is an angle that you guys should know. So, what's our directional angle? Well, it's 45 degrees. That's it. Uh, someone asked a good question. And it was because there's another, uh, there's another angle where tangent equals 1. There's this, this angle right here, which is in the first quadrant. But there's also this angle over here, which is in the third quadrant, right? Okay, this angle right here would be 180 degrees plus 45, so that would be what, 225, right? So this would be 225 right here. The reason why we don't put 225 is this. If you guys look at tangent, tangent goes like this, right? It goes when we graph it, right? But when we do, um, oh, i got to get your asymptotes in here. There's an asymptote right there, an asymptote right here. If we look at the inverse of tangent, it doesn't look like that. It looks like this. It goes this way. Right? And now our asymptotes are horizontal and not vertical anymore. Okay, do you guys know what those, um, these asymptotes are right here? You guys remember? Pi over pi over two. Yes, pi over 2 because that's where tangent is undefined. And then this one would be negative pi over 2, right? Okay, but instead of pi over 2, let's use degrees. So, uh, what is that in degrees? 90. 90. So that's 90 degrees, and this one's negative 90 degrees. Correct? Yes. So that means um, this one right here is 90 degrees, and this one right here is negative 90 degrees. So if, whenever I plug anything into um, this function right here, which is uh, tangent inverse of x, if I plug something into that function, my y will not be greater than 90, and it will not be less than negative 90. You guys understand that? Yeah. It will not be, like period, because it doesn't pass those lines. And that's why I only write 45 degrees. I don't write 225 because it doesn't fall within uh, the range for this function. Does that make sense? Just for the first time. Yeah. You only use the first uh, here.